Welcome to the Remnant C Bible Study Channel. Today's subject is the four horses of the apocalypse. Let's jump right into this. And basically, there are three examples of the four horses found in the Word of God. And the first example I will concentrate on the one found in Revelation uh, 6 1. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given him uh, unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Now, this word bow in the Greek is toxon. It's a cheap fabric imitation. And this crown is uh, Stephanos, and it's, it's a tightly woven chalet, and I'll let you figure out what that is. And this, this guy's a fake here. The rider on the first white horse is the Antichrist wearing a fake bow and a fake crown. And this guy, this phony imposter is going to fool much of the world, beloved, because they're completely unprepared for this guy. Now, there are are types and examples of the Antichrist found throughout God's Word. He rides a white horse, and Jesus Christ also rides a white horse. God wants his children to know the difference between the two because Satan is the greatest actor of all times. And he's got, from what I can count, 33 names and roles that, that he plays as the greatest actor of all times. This is why the seal is given to us as the first seal, because it is the most important. You must recognize that this first rider, in the context of the end times, rides before the true Christ rides on his white horse at the second coming. The first rider arrives, which is Satan, at the 666 seal, trump, and vial, and the second rider arrives at the 777, seal, trump, and vial. Now, let's go to the uh, second example here of this white horse. Uh, uh, um, this, is actually, this is actually the real, not the second example I want to give, but this is the example of the real, true Jesus Christ riding on the on the on the uh, white horse that appears at the seventh seal, trump, and vial, and they're given in Revelation 19:11. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him was called faithful and true. Praise his name, beloved. That's what he is, faithful and true. And in righteousness, he doth judge and make war. And these are the people that are following with him, beloved. Uh, Revelation 19, 14. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. These are all the saints that come back to this earth with him, beloved, at the, at the second coming. Just as... Just as uh, you know, uh, 1 Thessalonians 4.17 and uh, 1 Corinthians 15.52. Um, 50, this, is, this is that time, beloved. Now, let's continue in Revelation uh, chapter 6 and verse 3. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come, come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given unto him, that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and they that should kill, and and that they should kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword, the sword of war, beloved. And the red horse is symbolic uh, of war. And let's go on to this next seal. And when he had opened the the third seal, I heard the third beast say, "Come and see." And be, and I beheld, and lo. A black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, 
and three measures of barley for a penny, and see thou not hurt the oil and the wine. And the black horse is symbolic for chaos, injustice, famine, pestilence, economic woes, and even the balance of power, which, you know, he held in his hands a pair of balances, beloved. This can be symbolic for even the rule of law. And the, the rule of law right now is non-existent in the world, and especially the United States. Just look around. These people are, are just absolutely gone haywire. Um, now, um, let's go on to the next seal in verse 8. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword, with hunger, with death, and with the beasts of the earth. And you, you can see that this, the way that this is used, this, this, um, this uh, speckled, this pale horse, is a pretty self-explanatory, uh, you know, and death and hunger. And he even controls the beasts of the earth and uses them to, to, uh, to cause havoc on the earth. Now let's go to the fifth seal in verse 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, and I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. Now this has been happening from the beginning of time, if you just look around, beloved. And so this is, this is a type and example, but this is going to uh, intensify in the end times when people are delivered up before the magistrates of the Antichrist when he makes his appearance. Now, here's the second example of the four horses, uh, and it's found in Zechariah. Zechariah 1.8, And I saw by night, and behold, a man riding upon a red horse, and he stood among the myrtle trees, which are symbolic for God's people, <clears throat> excuse me, that were in the bottom and behind him were their red horses, speckled and white. <clears throat> now this is the angel of the Lord, beloved, and he's riding on the, the war horse. He's sitting on this war horse in observance among the children of God on the earth at this time. And I believe he's riding this horse right now and he's watching, waiting, and contemplating um, and he's not happy with his children right now, beloved. Now, could this red horse be next, or, or could the white horse be next? We don't know, beloved. We're, we're, you know, we're not sure. All we can do is be prepared as, as much as we can and stay repentant and just love the Lord God with all your heart and stay close to him. And he'll give warning to us through his prophets. Now, the Lord is sitting on this red horse of war, and the red, pale, and white horses are behind him. And, and they're just standing and waiting in observance. And it's, it's like they're scouts, you know. They're just scoping the earth out right now. They're just kind of watching what's going on. Could they be watching the black horse at work? Notice I'm, I'm asking questions here, beloved, because we, we don't know all the answers. We just we can only observe. And the black horse is not mentioned here in these verses, but the black horse is mentioned in Zechariah 6 and Revelation 6. I believe Zechariah 1 is a preview to the seven seals being unveiled by mentioning these horses and omitting the black horse. This may be a way of saying the black horse will be first in this particular sequence of Revelation 6. And even so, all the horses are going to ride no matter what. And we just, we just have to watch and observe, beloved. When the scales are the balances of power that governs all the earth and all who live therein are out of balance, this is when chaos, you're, you're going to see chaos like never before. Um, it, you know, this black horse is, is ridden many times in the world, but in the end times, this is going to be 
uh, completely just so intensified like never before. Now, verse 9, And then I said, then said I, O oh my Lord, what are these? And the angel that talked with me uh, said unto me, I will show thee what these be. Now, this is the, this is the angel uh, I believe the angel of the Lord, and he's explaining what these four horses are, beloved. And you don't need to interpret this any further. And the man that stood among the myrtle trees, and he looked, God himself even called a man here. Uh, and the man that stood among the myrtle trees answered and said, These are they whom the Lord has sent to walk true to and fro through the earth. They have... They have dominion to walk from the earth back and forth to heaven and report to the Lord. And they answered the angel of the Lord that stood among the myrtle trees and said, We have walked to and fro through the earth, and behold, all the earth sitteth still and is at rest. Now, what this term, all is at rest, could be saying is that Christianity has lost its salt and is no longer effectively spreading the true gospel. And they may be spreading something, but beloved, I don't believe it's a true gospel. It's the traditions of men. And all you got to do is turn on the TV or YouTube or anything, and all you see is false doctrine and people begging for money and just a bunch of nonsense, beloved. The world has turned its back on God. It just seems like it. It seems like everybody, uh, beloved, there's only a few that, you know, that are standing for the Lord in this day and age. And Christianity is in de decline as of now and sitting still. You know, this could be representative. You could say it's like a pendulum. It goes back and forth, right? And there's a point where the pendulum is swinging, uh, is no longer swinging. It's standing still before it goes back the other way. And it's the same could be said when you throw a rock up in the air. It reaches a certain point and is completely sitting still before it returns back to the earth. Now, let's go to the third example of the four horses, and it's found in Zechariah 6, verse 6. And I turned and lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, there came four chariots out of between two mountains, and the mountains were mountains of brass. And mountains are symbolic of nations, and brass is symbolic of strength. The, net, the nations represented here are Russia and the USA. And I, I believe this to be true, beloved. And, and or they're Jacob and Esau. They struggled in the womb of Rebekah. And God said, in your womb are two great nations or mountains of brass. Now, uh, let's go on to... Uh, uh, to uh, this, this is verse 2. In the first chariot were red horses, and the second chariot black horses, and in the third chariot white horses, and the fourth uh, chariot gristled and bay horses. Um, notice, notice how the words in the first, second, and the first, second, third, and fourth chariot are used. The horses are in the chariots instead of pulling them. In this context, the chariot could be a house or a people, and the Hebrew will bear this out. It, the, this word horse in the Hebrew has many things. It could be a galloping, like when a horse gallops, um, and the etymology of it. And, and it can also be a house, and a house can mean people, the house of Israel, the house of Russia, the house of Jacob. It could be a house, as it's mentioned here. Then I answered and said unto the angel that, that talked with me, What be these, my Lord? And the angel answered and said unto me, These are the four spirits of he the heavens, which go forth from standing before the Lord of the, all the earth. And again, the Lord mentions the four spirits above, and he describes how he uses them. And now the black, let's go to verse 6 here now. And the black horses which are therein go forth into the north country, and, and the white go forth after them, and the gristled go forth toward the south country. And the bay went forth and sought to go, that they might walk to and fro through the earth, 
And he said, get ye hence, walk to and fro through the earth. So they walked to and fro through the earth. And then cried he unto me and spake unto me, saying, Behold, these that go toward the north country have quieted my spirit in the north country. Now, I, I believe that the north country spoken of here is Russia. And the time mentioned here is when communism was broken in Russia. And you remember this. Um, they're, they're now coming back uh, onto the world scene and, and trying to dominate. You know, Putin is everywhere you look. This guy is just everywhere. And he is a very smart man, beloved. You should never, we should never underestimate Putin. And they're no longer quiet anymore. Uh, so um, they're on the scene causing all kinds of problems for all the world right now, beloved. Now, the red horse is not sent forth to make war and is not given directions at this time. The USA and Russia have never had a direct war up until now. All of the other horses have been active in these two prophetic nations of the end times. God himself said there were two nations in the womb of Rebekah, and they fought even while they were in her womb. They are still fighting to this very day, and they may lead the world to war. And uh, let's go to Genesis 25, 23, where this is borne out. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb. And this is, I believe, these are the two mountains of brass. And two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels, and the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elders shall serve the younger. And let's look at this, uh, these, this, uh, these two, and, and, and spoken of in Romans 9.13. As it is written, Jacob I have loved, but Esau I have hated. The Lord hated Esau because Esau didn't care about his heritage, beloved. Let's go to Malachi 1, 2. I have, loved, I have loved you, saith the Lord, yet you say, Wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother? Saith the Lord, yet I have loved Jacob, and I hated Esau, and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Whereas Edom saith, We are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, They shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them. The border of, the border of wicked, wickedness, and the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. That's not a place I would want to be, beloved. And your eyes shall see, and ye shall say, The Lord will be magnified from the border of Israel. Now let's go to Ezekiel 39 and we'll see this, this scenario being spoken of again. 39.1 And I am against thee, O Gog, which I believe is Russia. I will turn thee back. I will smite thy bow out of thy left hand and I will cause thine arrows to fall out by thy right hand. I will turn thee back. I will give thee unto the ravenous birds of every sort. And then the beast spoken of in the earlier um, chapter. And I will send a fire on Magog and among them that dwell carelessly in the isles. And they shall know that I am the Lord. There's the sacred name of God. I make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel. I will not let them pollute my holy name any more. The Lord won't let Russia do this anymore at the end, beloved. I am the Lord, the Holy One of Israel. Bless His name, beloved. Bless His name. Notice all the words, I am, I will, I make. The Lord is emphatic about this, beloved. It is God who will fight the final battle of Armageddon and Haman God against Russia and the hordes that Russia will bring with them. One of the characteristics of Esau was that he did not care about his heritage. He sold it for a bowl of red pottage. And the color red comes up time and again when associated with the name of Esau. 
<laughs> Beloved, I remember Gorbachev. Um, you remember he had that big old red scar or that, that red, it was a, not a scar, it was a birthmark. I mean, if that isn't a sign right there, and he was the start of, you know, the beginning of the end of the communist system in Russia. And even now, Russia is different than it was before Gorbachev and before the kind of the awakening of the Russian people. And I still remember Reagan, you know, tear this wall down. And, and that wall came down. And we, we all thought communism was going to be destroyed at that time. But and lo and behold, it's, it's rearing its ugly head again. Um, now, um, this battle, you know, the, red, the color red, if you look at it, it comes up again, time and again. Uh, and Esau wanted to kill his brother back then, and he still does to this day. There's just a hate, a jealousy among the brothers. Uh, but, you know, beloved, the Russian people are, are a good people. It's, it's, it's the rulers. It's the ruling class. Just like our country, there's a lot of good people in the United States. But the ruling class, they're a bunch of, they're just a bunch of no goods. And it just seems like that all over the world. The ruling class is in charge of we, the poor peons. And they're, they're just up to no good, all of them. So don't, don't pin this on the Russian people. Uh, but nevertheless, they do seem to carry this trait, uh, you know, they're, they're, that, that trait that Esau passed down, it may continue to this day. And you can't overlook that, beloved, but then you can't throw the baby out with the bathwater either. You just have to keep this in mind when you look at the Russian people. And the battle still it continues between the two brothers today, as God said it would, beloved. This is the way it, this is written. God was the, uh, Jacob was the younger and he saw the older. And now when the scriptures refer to Jacob in the latter days, they're speaking of the whole house of Jacob and the natural seed. And this is a reference to the whole house of Israel, including Judah. Um, now let's go to Zechariah 1 9. And then said I, uh, O my Lord, what are these? And the, the angel of the Lord talked with me, saying to me, And I will show thee what these will these be. Now again, we're repeating this. These I, I just wanted to take you back to this. I want to re-emphasize the fact that the Lord is explaining what these four heart horses are. And I want you to never lose sight of this, beloved. They're not some mystical, you know, uh, as a lot of people, you see them in these pictures. You know, the, the, the guy with the sickle. And, and these are the four spirits of the Lord that he uses. And he's explaining this again right here. Uh, he's explaining this. And I, wanna, I just want to go over this again. And the man that stood among the myrtle trees answered and said... These are they whom the Lord has sent to walk to and fro through the earth. And these that walk to and fro on the earth are the four spirits of war, famine, chaos, and death. And also the white horse represents Satan as the great imitator. And do not lose sight of this, beloved. And do not lose sight of the fact that God is in control of all of them. And nothing... Nothing gets by God. Nothing takes him by surprise. And the horses of the Bible could be used as types or examples and also exclusively for the end times. You could say the four spirits that God uses to bring about his will on the earth have been here since the beginning of time. When the word chariot is used, it is almost always used in the context of war and the horse can be used to pull the chariot. There is no chronology attached to the horses as they are, are described, but death will follow famine, and pestilence and death will also follow war. The number for the earth is four in Bible acrostics, and don't forget that, beloved. 
and the four horses have been used throughout this entire earth age at the discretion of your Father in heaven, who is none other than Yahweh. Beloved, I hope you enjoyed this, and, and um, I hope your day is going smooth, and I just love doing this for you to explain the Word of God to you, and much love from me to you, and we'll see you on the next one, beloved.